Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Don't forget, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT past question for the subject biology, the year 2016. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us because we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. Don't forget in this clip we are solving questions 1 to 20. So join me as we solve questions 1. Which of the following conditions is not necessary for photosynthesis to take place? Remember photosynthesis, that process whereby um, green plants are able to manufacture their foods. Okay? Um, the requirement, the chlorophyll which is used to tap sunlight is found in chloroplast. We have um, uh, we, of course, light, sunlight, yeah, that's the source of energy. We, we need uh, carbon for oxide and water, and in that process, they give out oxygen. So what is not needed is carbon monoxide or carbon two oxide, okay? Um, this, is, uh, this is a very poisonous gas. It is gotten from the process of incomplete combustion of gasoline fuel. So the correct option here is option C. Carbon monoxide is not necessary for photosynthesis to take place. Question 2. The insect in which the maxillae are modified into a long coiled proboscis is what? That insect is butterfly, okay? It is um, coiled up to um, suck out nectar from plants, all right? So, um, going by what the question requires, although we have um, mosquitoes, we have um, ass flies, they both have proboscis, okay? But in case of mosquito, the proboscis is actually used to suck blood, specifically the female and ophelis mosquito, okay? The blood is required to um, tend the eggs, okay? So, the correct option here is butterfly, okay? The, that insect in which um, the maxillae are modified into a long coiled proboscis, it is the butterfly. Option B is very correct. Question three. When a cell is placed in solution and the size of the cell increases, the concentration of the solution is said to be what? That tells you it is an hypotonic solution. The solution concentration is low, okay, compared to what is happening in the cell. And that's why water moves in. And this can lead to, this, uh, to the swelling of the cell and it can even eventually rupture, rupture or burst, okay? That tells you an hypotonic solution. Okay, movement of water into the cell. Then in an hypotonic solution, the concentration okay, of the solution is higher than that of the cell. And water moves out of the cell into the environment or the surrounding. That is an example of plasmolysis. Or plasmolysis is an example of such situation. And the cell will shrink and it can lead to death of that cell. So an isotonic solution means that the concentration in the solution and in the cell, they are the same thing. So there's no water movement at all. A dilute solution, you know, you diluted with enough water, that particular solution. For instance, when you talk about dilute hydrochloric acid, that means there are enough water quantity, okay, that is present there. So going by the question given us, when a cell is placed in solution and the size of the cell increases, the concentration of that solution is said to be what? It is said to be hypotonic option C. Number four, which of the following plant hormone is responsible for ripening of fruit? Okay, ripening of fruit. So, um, the gibberellins and the auxins, they are referred to as the growth hormones in plants. Okay, and um, they are responsible for cell elongation and what have you. So, going to the real answer to the question given us, that particular hormone is the ethylene. Hormone, okay, it is it exists in its gaseous form and is responsible for ripening of fruit. It also um, prevents or reduces or inhibits, yeah, inhibits um, elongation, cell elongation, particularly. So, going back to the context of the question given us, which is which of the following plant hormone is responsible for ripening of fruit? That particular hormone is ethylene. Option C. Question five. The ability of a living organism to detect and respond to changes in the environment is referred to as what? It is referred to as irritability, okay? Um, response to stimulus, 
okay, in the environment. It can be internal or external. So that's reachability. When you see locomotion, what comes to your mind is movement. Okay? When you talk about taxes as well, it can be phototaxis as response to light, it can be chemotaxis response to chemical, it can be geo, uh, whatever. So, um, taxis, I've just given an example, photo and chemotaxis. Okay? So, when you talk about growth, that is increase in size. Okay? So, what is that um, ability of an organism to respond to, to detect and respond to changes in the environment? That is referred to as irritability found in option C. Don't forget to download the My School mobile app or get the My School software for just a token of 1000 Naira. So, how do you get any of these tools? All you just have to do click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website where you can get any of these tools with simple and easy steps. So, join me as we solve question six. An example of endospermous seed is what? At first, when you talk about endosperm in plant, um, you are referring to that, um, that primary source of food for developing embryos. And sometimes it even persists in some seed. It serves as food storage, okay, to the, very close to the embryo. So that kind of, um, that kind of example, endospermous seed, it can be maize or this castor plant. So, if you look through all of the options given us, we have maize. So, the correct option here is option D, maize green. Don't forget that you have to hit the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video clips. 7. Which of the following theories was not considered by Darwin in his evolutionary theory? Okay, what he did not consider is use and disuse. This was considered by Jean Lamarck. Another thing that Jean Lamarck considered is the inheritance of acquired traits. So, the correct option here is option C, use and disuse, was considered by Jean Lamarck, not Charles Darwin. Option C is very correct. Number eight. Which of the following protects the essential parts of the flower at bud stage? Okay, that part is the sepals. Okay, the sepals provide support and protection to these flower buds before they finally open up. So the correct option here is option B for sepals. Number nine. Which of the following is an agent of a sexually transmitted disease? Okay. So, um, let's consider option A. This is um, Entamweba uh, stolitica. Okay, stolitica. That causes um, amoebic dysentery. We have uh, Salmonella typhi. That is, of course, for typhoid. We have uh, Trepanoma pallidium. Okay, this is what causes syphilis. I will know syphilis is a venereal disease, sexually transmitted disease. We have uh, Clostridium tetani. That is for tetanus or lockjaw. So the correct option here is option C. Which of the following is an agent of sexually transmitted disease? That is option C for syphilis. Number 10. Which of the following animals has homodont dentition? Okay, remember we have homodont and heterodont dentition. Homodont dentition, that tells you that um, these teeth or this set of teeth, they have similar function, okay? And they have the same size the same shape. Sometimes there may be little kind of um, variation based on their location, but um, in, an, in, an ID, in an ID case, okay, um, similar shape, the same or similar function, okay? So, which of the following animals has homodont dentition? In that case, we have reptiles, we have um, fishes, we have amphibians. So, this is mammal, rat is a mammal, this is mammal, this is a reptile, this is an harvest. So, this tells you that the correct option here is option C. Lizard has homodont dentition. 11. The movement of blood between the heart and all other parts of the body beside the lungs is known as what? That is known as systemic circulation. Although it's still under the closed circulatory system, but it's a type of specifically a systemic circulation between the heart and other parts of the body. But if it involves the heart and the lungs, going to the lungs, then coming back to the heart, that is pulmonary circulation. So the correct option here is option A, systemic circulation is that movement of blood between the heart and all other parts of the body beside the lungs. The correct option, once again, is option A, systemic circulation. Question 12. 
If the cross of a red flower plant with a white flowered plant produces a pink flower plant, this is an example of what? This is an example of incomplete dominance, okay? The heterozygous um, genotype expression you are seeing gives rise to a kind of uh, phenotype that falls in between the excessive and the dominant um, traits, okay? It gives you a kind of um, alleles are blamed, all right? So, and in this case, uh, you are going to observe something pink, something that is completely different from dominance or the recessive traits. So why for co-dominance both traits are equally expressed, okay? So in, if it's going to be a co-dominance um, case or in co-dominance, what you should have will not be a kind of flower plant that will be a mixture of red and white. So the correct option here is option B. This tells you that such a plant is an example of incomplete dominance. Number 13, the largest amount of yolk is found in the egg of what? It is found in the egg of an alvis. Okay, we're talking about beds here. If you try to arrange them according to the complexity or their evolution standard or whatever, you are going to start with the, the first one, which is the uh, Pisces. Then from the uh, Pisces, you are going to have the amphibians then to the reptiles, then to the harvest, then to man, okay? So if you want to use that, that's also viable, at least in this um, context. So the correct option is the largest amount of yolk is found in the egg of option D, pies. Question 14. Fibrinogen and prothrombin play important roles in the world, okay? Um, they are actually very important in the clotting of blood. You know, this fibrinogen is being converted to fibrin and this uh, fibrin in turn becomes this mesh-like uh, material that traps um, red blood cells and this is to enable clotting of blood. So the correct option is option B for clotting of blood. Question 15. The pathogen that causes small pox, it is the pox virus, okay? We know that in diameter, the size is um, 200 nm, okay? And um, it is airborne, it is this, um, this thing, this pox virus causes small pox, although we don't have, um, we, it is believed that it is eradicated, okay? Um, small pox that is eradicated, though there may still be cases, but officially, it is um, taken as being eradicated. So the pathogen that causes smallpox is option D, pulse virus. Herpes virus, it causes herpes, okay? The correct option, once again, is option D for pulse virus. Remember that you can use the link in the description below to ask your questions right now. All you just have to do, click on the link. It takes you to the My School website where our solution providers are waiting and willing to help you out. So join me as we solve question 16. The vector of the malaria parasite is a what? It is a female Anopheles mosquito. The male can actually feed on plant juices, okay? So for the female, um, the infected uh, female Anopheles mosquito, okay? Normally they suck blood just to be able to tend to their head to mature, okay? But once they are infected, they pass this um, plasmodium parasite into the blood into the body and we have different types of um, plasmodium we have plasmodium falciparum is deadly we have um, plasmodium ovale plasmodium virax um, plasmodium malaria and what have you so the correct option here is option b the female anopheles mosquito is the vector for the malaria parasite perhaps you have better steps explanations or solutions you would like to share all you just have to do Use the comment section below, indicate that question number and the solutions or steps you would like to share. Question 17. Which of the following pairs are social insects? Okay, no social insects. They live in society whereby there is already a caste system. That is, um, each individual knows what role to play in that society. So let's look at um, the first pair, which is termites and locusts. That is incorrect. Termites, of course, social insect, but not for locusts. We have ants and cockroach. No, cockroach is not. Ant is, of course, but the pair is incorrect because of cockroach. We have cockroach and bee. This is incorrect. This is correct. So the pair is incorrect. We have option D, termites and bee. Yeah, of course, this is a very correct pair that shows a typical example of social insects. And we have the wasps, we have the termites, we have the ants, we have the bees. These are all social insects. So the correct option here is option D, termite and B. Question 18. 
which of the following is not a method of conserving wildlife? Okay, you are trying to um, keep them safe or prevent them from going extinction. Okay, so uh, which of these methods that is being um, put forward there is not a way of conserving wildlife? And that particular option is indiscriminate poaching. Okay, poaching means you are killing, illegal killing, hunting or capturing of animals. Okay, and most times you are abusing land rights, you are trespassing. Okay, probably you are even, um, like it is said, indiscriminate. Even the word poach itself, it's, it's not good. So, uh, if, if you consider option B, establishment of zoological gardens, of course, this is very good. You keep them in a kind of environment that you cultivate to make it look natural. You talk about um, enacting wildlife conservation laws, of course, um, bringing uh, the poachers to book. Okay, this is very good. Um, we have option D. Establishment of game reserve. Game reserves, you know, you have um, like the Yankari game reserve, you have enough land space where these animals can feel um, well expressed in their natural environment. Okay, so the, the method that is not a way of conserving wildlife is indiscriminate poaching. Option A is the correct option. Number 19. The importance of the mouth breeding behavior in tilapia is that it is what so you can refer to it as the mouth breeding as um, probably oral incubation, buca incubation, or what have you. So the main thing is just to be able to you know this fertilized egg there. Um, they tend to grow once they grow they hatch. Once they are even hatched, sometimes these uh, fishes they tend to keep them there so that they can protect them. Okay, from predators in the environment. So the key thing here is for protection. Okay, and this kind of fishes that are being bred uh, using this mouth breeding, mouth breeding uh, method, they tend to be stronger, more agile, even they have um, higher chances of survival compared to the others. So the key thing is to afford protection from predation for the young fish. So the correct option, once again, is option B. Number 20, the type of asexual reproduction that is common to both Paramecium and protist is what? Okay, um, such protists we can take amoeba for instance. Um, so the kind of asexual reproduction common to them is binary fission. Okay, when you talk about fission, you are breaking or breaking a particular thing into two. That is for layman explanation. So that asexual reproduction common to them both is um, binary fish. And that thing that is common between paramecium and let's take amoeba as a case study for protists is that um, uh, they are both eukaryotes, they both live in water, okay, and um, other um, similar characteristics like that. So the correct option is option D, fission or binary fission. Right here, we've come to the end of this segment, but there are more segments to come. All you just have to do is to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video clips.